Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I want to look at Luminar 4 and show you my top 11 uh, tools inside of Luminar 4. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start out with a really cool new feature added to Luminar 4, and that is the sky replacement filter. And I know everybody's been looking forward to this one, including myself. Okay, and you'll find it right here under the creative section. So just give that a click and click on sky replacement. They call these um, tools now. So you click on the sky replacement tool. And inside here, you'll see sky selection. It's a drop-down menu. And you have all these different skies that Luminar give us. And you can load your own custom skies, which is really nice i'm just going to click on the original sky for a second and then you have all these adjustments in here that you can adjust your image this is not a tutorial on sky replacement today but i just wanted to introduce you to it but let's click on sky selection again and let's click on a sky let's do uh blue sky three and right away you can see i have a sky replacement and that's really awesome now there's a couple little issues in here you can see some of the old sky in here that needs to be fixed that's an easy fix. You just want to go to advanced settings. If it's not open, just click it and see where it says close gaps. You just adjust this to the left until those gaps close up. Somewhere right around there it looks pretty good. And then you can come here and you can change that to a different sky. Try to find one you think that really works well for the image. So that is, is pretty cool. And let's try like a uh, dramatic sky. And let's try a dramatic sunset. So pretty cool features. Now it's important when you're doing your images that you make sure, let me go to another sky here. Let's go back, let's go to blue sky one. You wanna make sure the scene is lit properly. So right now, in this one you can see that it uh, looks like it's lit from the left-hand side and the actual foreground scene is lit from the right so there's a flip sky here so kind of important that you really check that out when you're doing these things that you make sure that you get the orientation of the sky correct okay but sky replacement is totally awesome so that's my first new favorite feature I went ahead and reset the image and I want to show you uh, again this is all about my favorite uh, Tools inside of Luminar 4, um, not necessarily all new tools. A lot of these have been in here in other versions of Luminar. But I want to show you my favorites. So let's come to the first tab here, which is the Essentials tab. Let's come under Light here. One of my favorites is Smart Contrast. So let me just pull this up to the right. And you can see it, it, it intelligently adjusts the uh, contrast of your image, which is really nice. Now let me pull it to the left so we can pull the contrast back. We can pull the contrast up. So that's smart contrast. Very easy to use, but very effective. The next tool, which is a favorite for a lot of photographers, and that is the AI Enhance. And we find it right here under the Essentials section. And let's just click on AI Enhance. And inside here, we have nested AI Accent and AI Sky Enhancer. So let's do AI Accent first. This is just a wonderful tool. This is pulled up, and it will just totally adjust your image intelligently. And really, it just really tones it out nicely and does a really fine job. We can pull it the whole way up. And I always recommend pulling things the whole way up just so you can see what they're doing. And let's just pull it back. So just adjust it to where you think you it looks good for you. And then leave it there. And then you also have the AI Sky Enhancer. I mean, these are just slide a slider and you get really great results. And it gets you where you want to go very quickly. So AI Sky Enhancer, and it's only going to work on the sky. So as you can see, it does a really, really fine job there. So again, these are two wonderful tools, AI Enhance and AI Sky Enhancer. To see the before and after, all you have to do is click right here, and you'll see the before and the after. But doesn't that do a wonderful job? That is really an awesome tool. The next favorite tool of mine is AI Structure, and it's found right here under AI Enhance. So let's click this. This is brand new for Luminar 4 and a very welcome addition for 
many photographers and i truly love it it's an amazing tool working with artificial intelligence to bring up details and things in your image so if you move this to the right we're going to uh, bring up some details and it's only bringing up details that need to be brought up and it's holding back in other areas where it feels should not be brought up and it works extremely well so let me bump the whole way up to the right and you can see it there I'm just going to pull it back just to where I think it looks really good and see somewhere right around there. And then you have a boost slider that you can boost up those details. I'm just going to maybe just boost them up a very slight amount right there. Now let's click right here and see the before and the after. Really, really good looking uh, result here. So that's AI structure and it's so simple to use. Now remember, you can use masking with every one of these features. So if you only want to add it to a certain part of the image, you can do that. And also, for instance, if you wanted to just smooth the sky out a little bit, you could take this AI structure and bump it to the left a little bit and just soften up that sky a little bit. And then you could just mask it in. So, so that works out really nicely. By the way, you can come also up to this little eyeball here and left click this with your mouse and hold it down and you can see the before and the after to see the result of the AI structure or any tool that you're using. And you also have a split screen mode here. So just click on that and you can just drag this to the left and to the right to see the before, to see the before and after results. But really amazing results. I love AI structure. Another one of my favorite tools is found under the Essentials group here, and that would be the Details Enhancer. And this is really a great filter because it lets you, or tool I should say, it lets you adjust your small details, your medium, and your large details. And it also has a sharpen here. And you have an advanced settings in here where you can protect your details and you can adjust your sharpening radius, which is a great feature. So let's go to small details and let's just bump this up a little bit. And it's only going to target the smaller details. And then you can adjust your medium details so you can give the medium details more detail or less detail, depending on what you like. And of course, you also have your large details, which is only going to deal with the large details of the image. And you can cut that back. A lot of times I'll cut this one back a little bit, pull up my medium a little bit and pull up my small a little bit, which makes for a really nice adjustment. So the details enhancer. A great feature. Next up, another favorite of mine in the Essentials group here would be the Landscape Enhancer tool. And inside of here we have Dehaze, Golden Hour, and Foliage Enhancer. Dehaze, great for removing haze from your image. A wonderful tool. We have Golden Hour. If you need to add some golden light to your image, you can bump this up to the right and add some golden tones to your image. I don't really like it for this image, but it's here. And just play with that one. Very simple to use. And then you have Foliage Enhancer. So it's just going to target the, uh, the greens of the image here. So let's take the Foliage Enhancer and bump it up to the right. And then we can come to Advanced Settings, and in here we have Foliage Hue, so we can adjust this hue. We can warm up these, these uh, green tones, or we can cool them down, moving it to the right. So let's just warm these tones up a little bit, like this, and then let's come back to Foliage Enhancer and just pull that back till it looks just about right. We take it the whole way off and just bump it up a little bit. A lot of times you don't want to go too crazy on these things, but just... Just err on the side of a little bit too less. It always, it always helps out a little bit. So anyway, right around there looks good. But that is the Landscape Enhancer. I love it. It's great. My next favorite tool has been with Luminar probably since the beginning of Luminar, and that's Vignette Tool. But I love it. Let's just click on it here, and it's found under, under the Essentials group. But the nice thing about it is you have a Choose Subject, amount, size, but in the advanced setting, this is the part I really like, and that is the inner light, and I'll show you how that works. But it's a typical vignette tool, and you've used them in the past, so you know what you're doing there. So, But let's just go ahead and pull the amount back to darken it up and give us a darker vignette. Now, of course, with the choose subject, we can click here and then just, like, say we want to hide, we want the, uh, the vignette to go around the mountain here. We can click here and then center in on this mountain. So 
So that's a nice feature. Or let's go choose subject again and let's put it right in the center because that's probably where I put it on this image here. And of course you can adjust your mount. And you can move it to the right as well and add a light vignette around it. We all love that light vignette, don't we? Sometimes I use it. Sometimes, you know, there are no rules here. You just do what you think looks best. But let me just give it a little vignette. And of course you can adjust the size of vignette and the roundness the shape of it, the feathering of it. But here's the inner light I want to show you here. This is really nice because in the center of the vignette, we can move that to the right and make that lighter, which is a nice addition. And that's why I think this vignette tool inside of Luminar is probably the best vignetting tool on the market today. It's really a great tool. Now we're moving into the creative group right here. So just give this icon a click right here. And of course we have sun rays in here. I use that occasionally, but not necessarily one of my favorites, but it's a nice tool. But I want to show you one in here that I really like. And this is new and it's called Mystical. So let's click on that. Kind of simple sliders again, an amount and a shadow slider. And under advanced settings, we have smoothness, saturation, and warmth. Let me just pull this amount to the right and let me show you what this thing does. It just adds a mystical, kind of like an Orton effect, but just a nice mystical look to the image. Let's pull it the whole way to the right so you can really see what it's doing here. So it gives you like a soft, glowy, ethereal, magical feel to your image. And I really like this a lot. So let's pull it up to around 29. And of course, we can adjust the shadows here. So we can open up the shadows up. If we move it to the right, we can darken the shadows to the left. So we have a lot of control in here which really works out nicely. And then under the advanced settings, we can adjust the smoothness so we can make it a lot more smoother to the right. Take some of the smoothness out to the left so we can play with that. You can double click on the actual slider itself or on the actual name of the slider to reset things back. And of course we can adjust our saturation, pull it up or back depending what kind of a look we want. So just play around, experiment with it. And of course we can adjust the warmth as well so we can warm it up or cool it down. I'm just going to double click that. And of course everything comes with layer masks so you can mask anything in. Say you didn't want it on the foreground but you wanted it in the sky, you could just mask the sky in. Or if you just want it in the foreground and not the sky, you can mask it in there. But that is the mystical tool. Let's click on the uh, split screen here and we can see the before and the after. Really nice effect, isn't it? I really love the mystical tool. The next tool I want to look at is another one of my favorites, obviously, because this is a tutorial on Luminar 4 favorites. And this I will call the big brother to the mystical tool. And that is found, believe it or not, I don't know why it's here. I guess you use it in portraits, but it's under the portrait uh, group here. So let's click on portraits. And there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Everybody knows all about the uh, new uh, portrait uh, adjustments inside here. And they're amazing. We're not going over those today. But let's go to Orton Effect right here. It's inside the portraits. So, and we have two types. We have type one and type two. So, let's take this amount and move it to the right. And it's kind of like the mystical tool, but it adds that glowy, uh, high contrast look to your image. And a lot of landscape photographers love the Orton effect. Now, you don't want to go crazy with this stuff, but let's pull that amount up a little bit. And let's click on type two. And as you can see, you have two different types. That's a little more subtle. So let's go back to type one. Now let's click on advanced settings and now we have softness so we can soften up the Orton effect. We can take some of that softness down a little bit. We can adjust the brightness if it's getting a little too dark. We can just pull up the brightness a little bit and adjust that. And if we've got too much contrast in it, we can pull our contrast back. So there's our Orton effect. And let's, uh, let's click on the before and after here. So we can see there's the before and there's the after. But I love the Orton effect. You use it all the time in landscape images. And also uh, flower photography, which is one of my specialties. I love it in flower photography as well. So that's the Orton effect. Another one of my favorites. This is my next to the last favorite. And it's an oldie, but boy is it a goodie. And that would be found in the pro section here for professional. So just give that a click. And... 
you want to come to adjustable gradient uh, and it's found right under advanced contrast which is another favorite but I'm not showing it today but adjustable gradient so we'll click it set orientation when you click this and you get this overlay here and you can take this and you can move it up and down find the spot that you want to where you want your image to split from the top to the bottom the center here is where you want, say for instance, your horizon to be. And this is a graduation between here to here, and then the full effect starts here. And same here, the graduation starts here, comes to here, and then the full effect here. So you have top and bottom. So we'll start out with the top. So if we want to darken our top exposure a little bit, we can just take our exposure and pull it back a little bit. We can adjust the contrast whatever you want. Again, you can double click these to set them back. You can adjust your shadows and highlights are really nice. You can adjust your warmth, make it warmer or cooler, whichever you like. So that's a really great feature. And then we can come to our bottom and then say, for instance, if we wanted to lighten up the bottom a little bit, we could pull the exposure up a little bit on the bottom just to lighten it up a little bit or darken it down, whichever you want. But that is the adjustable gradient. It is a really great tool. Give it a try because I'm sure you're going to really love it too. It's going to become one of your favorites. I'm certain of that. We're down to my last favorite and that would be looks. So let's click on looks. And you see your looks appear at the bottom of the screen. Now, see over here in the left bottom of the interface uh, where it says Luminar Looks. Give that a click. It's a drop down menu. And you'll see all your looks that you have downloaded right in here. Now let's uh, go to um, Essentials. So let's click on Essentials and you'll see all the essential looks in here. Uh, and let's change that up actually. Let's change it to Dramatic so we can see something really change dramatically here. All right, so Dramatic. Now what I like to do when I'm using looks is come up here to this icon here for Layers. Click on this and you'll notice there's a little plus here so click on the plus create a new layer and i like to start out with a add new adjustment layer when you click that you add a new adjustment layer it comes with it with an opacity slider and it comes with a uh, blend mode slider which is really nice and you can also edit edit it as a mask as well so let's come to these looks here and let's just click on a look here let's just find one um uh, let's go to dramatic look right here. Okay, and you might say, well, that's over the top. But you can come to this amount slider and you can pull this back here, which is nice. Or you could leave it the whole way up and you can come up to this opacity slider and pull it back as well because it's on a new layer. So you'll achieve the same results here. So that's pretty cool. So, But I like to pull it back here. And let's just pull it back a little bit. And I'm going to show you. So say somewhere right around in there. And now when you come to the uh, filters here, you can see everything inside of that look, particular look that you have. Because you have this on a new adjustment layer. So you'll notice it's using light. It's using vignette. And if you didn't want the vignette on there, you could just uh, shut that vignette off. All right, because I already vignetted it. Uh, but you can come to the creative section. You can see it's using the dramatic filter. And then you can come and open up these filters. But they're going to be in, in light and the rest will be grayed out. And these will be highlighted too. So you can tell there's nothing in uh, the portrait and there's nothing in pro. But I click on light and you can see there's some lighting adjustments in here. They pull the highlights back for this look. So you can come in here and tweak these up. But that's looks. You can download looks. You can buy looks. Uh, Luminar gives you a lot of free looks. So check out the the Luminar website as well for the looks. Well, that's my favorite top 11 tools inside of Luminar 4. I hope you enjoyed this one today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. This way, every time I put out a new training video, you'll be notified about it. Well, thank you very much for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.